Nana, no, no. so uh, in 2012, this call for the forensic audit, there's some precedence to it, right? In 2012, you, you, was, you were still with the MPP, and that call was made. It was granted. UNDP supported the process, in fact, funded the process, I remember. And some external body was brought in to do that forensic audit. We've seen this series of errors. The Electoral Commission admits, makes corrections. In this instance, they've done the same. They say they're in the process of making corrections. Is that enough to secure the process or it has also impacted on trust, which is crucial in, in any electoral process such that an external body would have to take over the process of correcting the errors and not the commission that committed the errors itself? Well, thank you, Alfred. I think uh, this is again <laughs> one of the examples of very important national issues that tend to be reduced to MPP and DC banter when there are real issues to be dealt with. On this matter, I have already commended the NDC for initiating that critical examination because we as independent, the Electoral Commission told us that since we are independent, basically, the law, and they quoted the law, mm -hmm. does not allow the Electoral Commission to recognize an independent until you have filed. Meanwhile, the key instrument for this election, which is the register, you are supposed to file your presidential nomination forms with registered, registered voters. And you must have found, have a way of checking. Somebody might show you their card, their EC card, electoral card, voters card. How do you confirm that if you don't have a register? So, but that is it. But the issue is that clearly, this is not a matter that is of interest only to MPP and NDC as political parties who are vying for political power. Mm -hmm. This is a matter that is of interest to every Ghanaian, even the non-voter. The young Ghanaian who is not even up to 17, 18, who is not even qualified to vote. The old invalid Ghanaians who may not be able to go and vote even by proxy. This is a matter that is of interest to everybody. So when it gets to the discussion, I think it is important for Electoral Commission to elevate the discourse to that level of national importance. Look, this matter of forensic audit. So elections get questioned by people. People refuse to accept election results because they suspected that along the line, some things untoward may have happened. And so therefore, electoral results are not accepted. There are disputes and societies, nations, countries descend into violence, social instability, even civil wars and so on. So if you compare the potential for disputed elections, the cost of it, as against the cost of forensic audit, which one is cheaper? To the extent that Electoral Commission does not realize that the law and everything put together Electoral Commission is still a public institution, and I believe the Electoral Commission answers to the good people of Ghana, of course, through Parliament and, and the rest of it, but the Electoral Commission is also a public institution. Indeed. So if there are issues that are of interest to the public, from time to time, when it is convenient, the Electoral Commission issues press statements. Does it address only government or voters? It addresses the public because they recognize that they also need the goodwill and understanding and support of the people of Ghana. So if there is a precedent in the past that there has been a forensic audit before granted by the Electoral Commission and it helped to raise the credibility of their own institution, why are they averse to it at this point? The MPP's argument the, is that it's not the, within the law. Well, of course, that has been proved to be wrong. I mean, I think once... Well, 
the law doesn't debar the Electoral Commission. And once the Electoral Commission has indeed allowed that before, which I believe helped improve public confidence and the public's acceptability of whatever elections the commission is conducting, I think it is in the good, in the interest of not just electoral commission, not just the NDC, not even just the MPP. And I think we need to appreciate these issues. But the interest of every Ghanaian, I think we have to understand that electoral commission is a public institution. Nobody wants to tamper with the law by which a Electoral Commission operates. But we all have to understand and accept that the Electoral Commission eventually is accept, uh, uh, accountable to the people of Ghana. Now, having said that, if, as Kofi Adam said, on the day of election, some error is detected, that error may come as a result of incompetence, as a result of injustice, as a result of mischief, as a result of a genuine mistake, whatever the cause. On the day of election, you can't do anything. So whatever ought to be done, and whatever can be done, ought to be done and must be done before the day of election. So if in the meantime, we have another two months or so, two and a half months to go. These issues are coming up. And we, as a nation, have the opportunity of time to be able to address these things for the confidence level of Ghanaians to go up, for the credibility of Electoral Commission itself to go up. I don't see why anybody would describe it as an attempt to impugn the integrity of the Electoral Commission. Now, during Charlotte Hussey's time, when MPP was in opposition, the current president and top leaders of the MPP raised issues and questioned things that the Electoral Commission was doing and how they were doing it. At that time, were they impugning the integrity of the Electoral Commission or that they were well-intentioned? <laughs> I mean, sometimes when you look at this double speak, it becomes very worrying. That is why we have to do whatever it takes to give this country a completely new change that shifts us from MPP NDC discussions, discussions that come only out of political expediency to discussions that address so what will be in the best interest of Ghana, all of our citizens, or at least majority of our citizens in terms of our politics in terms of elections, in terms of democracy, in terms of economic development, in terms of opportunities for us to develop ourselves as individuals and as a nation together. These things clearly have hit a level where Ghana needs a completely new direction with radical, radical, revolutionary, not just mere piecemeal window dressing of changes, no. Because the issues we are addressing now, parties, MPP, NDC, are so deeply entrenched in their interests. So even when one side is speaking something that is objective, is a matter of principle, the other is already doubting and questioning. So it will be accepted or rejected only when parties can gauge their own immediate interests and what it knows to the benefit of a political party. It is a very dangerous situation where we are now, where everything is only considered in the interest of some political parties. Now, Alfred, mm -hmm. when you look at the errors that Electoral Commission is talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, my information is that the Erroneous, quote unquote, erroneous transfer that was done in the constituency of the minority leader was over 3,000 names. Yes, yeah. that's what yeah. they said they if, were inadvertently if, if, yes, uh, yes. added the yeah. previous years to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you see, in elections, 
The Constitution says whoever becomes the president can win by 50% plus, plus one. Vote. That one is not 1% though. Plus the vote. That one percent, that, that one that the Constitution talks about, 50% plus one, that one is one single vote. One single vote. The lawyers are here. Martin, mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, yeah, right? that's it. it's yeah. one vote. Mm. One. Mm. And a mistake takes away 3,000 or so votes to another place where by the time you run between your voting center and wherever your name might be, that is if they're able to tell you, say, oh, we wrongly transferred your name to this other polling station. By the time you get there, you know, so, so these are things that we need to allow good sense to prevail. Sometimes, and I've said this several times on different occasions, on different issues, when let's even grant that the law does not allow forensic audit, electoral commission by its own power is able to do things according to discretion. And the example I give them all the time is IPAC, the Interparty Advisory Committee, is not a statutory declaration. It, uh, uh, it's, it's a creation. creation. Of law. It's, creation it's of not. Law. It's not a, a, a statutory creation. Mm -hmm. It is a creation by the discretion of the Electoral Commission. Right. And look at the extent to which IPAC has been useful to our electoral and democratic process. So. What stops the Electoral Commission within that same spirit to say that, listen, the stakes are really high. And let me repeat, the stakes for this 2024 elections are much higher than ever before. We can discuss that at another time. Mm -hmm. But I don't think many people would argue with me. Mm -hmm. Now, if the stakes are so high, it means that we should not spare any opportunity to do what improves the transparency, the credibility, the legitimacy of the final results of this election. I will be the first person to agree that no human institution, no human activity is perfect. But we still have benchmarks that we call best practices. And every serious organization, every serious corporate entity, every serious government and nation Every serious individual positions themselves to move towards best practices. So under the circumstances, we have issues with trust and public confidence in the whole process. Now, it's having to do with that very critical instrument, the register. We want to appeal to the Electoral Commission, mm -hmm. please. If this is the only thing you can do to send a signal that truly the suspicions that some people may have of undue, unnecessary, in fact, probably illegal and wrong influences of the executive on the work and activities of the Electoral Commission, then Electoral Commission, please listen. Because you see, there is a lot of suspicion. They may be wrongly placed. They may be rightly placed. But what happens is that once the Electoral Commission takes certain steps, like Afarijan did, at least when he took that step, who can still go and complain about that particular issue again? He gave the chance. He gave the opportunity. He opened up. And then he sent a signal to everybody that, listen, I don't have anything to hide. Right. As we speak today, I don't think many people will argue with me that there's a lot of suspicion of some unholy alliance and marriage and, you know, relationship between the executive and the Electoral Commission. <laughs> they, they now, will say they are for, in bed. They, you know, I mean, yeah, that, that metaphor. Can you, can you imagine? So, but does it not 
concern. I mean, of course, beyond this, that every yeah. election year, the incumbent is said to be in bed with the, with the electoral commission. The bed they are sharing she, will lead to a still bed. <laughs> what, what whatever is, whatever, whatever <laughs> product <laughs> is formed out of that so, bed no, will lead to a right. still bed. No, no, <laughs> see, this is, is interesting because the point I put here is that... What are they doing on the bed? <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever product they get from there will lead to a still bed. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying here is that... <laughs> A letter commission mm. should put people's hearts and minds at rest mm. by going a little further, by accepting to do this forensic audit and other things that might not in itself solve all the problems, mm. other things that legitimately mm. and rightly improve the image and the credibility of the letter commission, mm. improves people's confidence in the process and create the platform for acceptance of the final declaration of the results of this election. I am saying whatever suspicions people have about whether they are in a, in a chair or in a couch or in a bed, whichever way you look at it, a letter commission can do something. And the power is in the hands of the letter commission. Afarijan, I have said it before and I'll say it, say it again in my own experience. We all had our own criticisms of Afarijan, but I can tell you that in my lifetime, in my political experience as a frontline politician, Afarijan to date is the best that we have had because of the way he handled even tense moments between MPP and NDC at IPAC. You know, the, the way Afarijan will handle the issue, even yeah. when you are not happy, you are not happy with his judgment, yeah. You will still accept it. Yeah. And the best example I can give you, how he handled the time debacle. It was, it was exceptional. The NDC was all over. MPP was up in arms. We said, declare. NDC said, declare results. MPP said, no, don't declare. Afarijan said, let's sit around the table. We sat down. From 10 AM to 4 PM at the Electoral Commission, NDC's team was led by Tony Lita. MPP team led by myself. And we went through the issues, argument and counter argument. At the end of the day, Afrojan said, OK, let's work the statistics, as both of you are saying. If we did go to time, this is the current result. Mm -hmm. uh, Kufuado Atamils. If all the voters voted If for all the Kufuado, voters voted for one, one person, person, it would, tell it the would results, definitely change tell the, the results. results. Mm -hmm. So we must go. Everybody had no choice. To then agree. We had to agree, of course. When we went, it went in the NDC's favor. And that was about it. So some of these and other things, we have the record to guide the current leadership of the Electoral Commission. And I, I would have expected even something higher. And I'm still expecting something higher from my good old friend, my dear Jean Mensah, because she has been in the forefront of civil society's move for improved democratic governance and practice in this country mm -hmm. from her IE. We've done a lot of things very positive with her leading. So now that she is in the chair at the Electoral Commission, if anything should go wrong, I think she would even more blamed than any previous chairperson. Right. Because I would say that she has such depth of experience and knowledge of the whole nitty gritty of the processes of democratic development and multi-party are that. Okay. So, so really, a letter commission, if they don't have anything to hide, the stakes are so high, they are accountable to the public, I think they should agree to the forensic audit. And two, uh, they should use their discretion. Right now, we have just a few days to the filing of nominations officially they should agree to give the independents copies of the, of the electoral register. register. Oh, yes. Yeah.